Hello, and welcome to ECNM Asks, the new Q&A video series in which readers pose their questions um, and our subject matter experts answer. It's brought to you by ECNM Magazine and found on the members only section of our website. I'm Tommy Northcott, Senior Power Engineer and Branch Manager with Jacobs. I'm here today to answer some of your most common questions about DC electrical hazards. So let's jump right in. Our first question is, the NFPA 70E 2021 Article 320 says electrical shock hazard threshold for battery systems is 100 volts DC. OSHA says 50 volts DC, which is correct. It was the 2018 revision that adopted the language in Article 320 from the Department of Energy Electrical Safety Handbook. It was also the 2018 revision that updated the DC shock hazard boundaries table to reduce the restricted approach boundary threshold from 100 volts DC down to 50 volts DC, effectively meaning that the safe DC voltage reduced from 100 volts to 50 volts DC. I believe the statement in the Article 320 has been an oversight and should be updated to align with the tables in Article 130 and the other, other dozen or so references it to the 50 volts throughout the standard. Also, the scope of Article 320 references the 50 volts threshold. So I would recommend using 50 volts DC as the safe voltage threshold. Our next question is, when doing an arc flash study with AC systems, you start with the available fault current from the utility at the service point. Where do you get similar source information for DC systems? It is very true that the calculation of arc flash energy is definitely different from AC versus DC. The standard or guideline for calculating arc flash energy in DC systems is still in development, but there are some IEEE papers available to provide approaches to calculate some conservative values. One way is to simply model the DC system as a system voltage and an impedance. From there, working with the assumption of a steady state current in the arc, you can use the resistance of the system and the resistance of the arc to determine the max power of the arc but I would recommend looking at the IEEE papers that are referenced in the IEEE 1584 standard and referenced in the NFPA 70E standard. Another reader asked, in solar systems, the current output varies with the solar input, which results in a varying overcurrent protected device opening time. What methods have you seen developed to address arc flash calculations for solar systems? This is indeed an example of the unique complexities of DC systems. As previously mentioned, there is no current governing standard. So there are no official methods to cover this. And this answer is simply my professional opinion. Knowing the variability of the system characteristics, the arc flash analysis process would need to be iterative to determine the impact of fluctuation in systems available current on the reaction of the overcurrent protective device to determine what scenario produces the highest arc flash energy. That maximum is what I would use to determine the level of PPE needed to protect myself. Another common question I get asked is, multiple 12 volt batteries in series can exceed 50 volts DC. What does the NFPA 70E say about this? Well, regardless of how voltages in excess of 50 volts DC are achieved, they must be treated as a hazard and workers must follow the safe work practices described in the NFPA 70E. Now here's an age old question. For the same voltage and relative internal resistance, would you consider the DC systems to be more dangerous than AC systems? I love this question. There have been many studies and experiments performed seeking this answer and I could spend hours on this subject. However, for the sake of brevity, I'll just say that shock hazards and arc class hazards are both serious hazards, regardless of whether the source is AC or DC, and we need to protect ourselves and the workers in accordance with the NFPA 70E. In an effort to keep these videos short and sweet, it looks like we're about out of time for today. I'll pick up next time with answers to your most pressing technical questions. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of ECNM Asks, produced by ECNM Magazine a part of the portfolio of Endeavor Business Media Publications. Tune back in for our next episode coming soon to the members-only portal. Thanks, and have a great day.